Shalom to the elect of Israel. <clears throat> Let's begin this quick exhortation by first and foremost giving honor and glory to the power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Yahweh is our heavenly Father's name and His only begotten Son, our King, our Deliverer, our Big Brother, our Hero, Yahweh Shai. Let's give double honors to our leaders our head apostles, the bishop, the elders, from the great millstone that taught us this truth. And salutation, peace to all the brothers out there doing this work in sincerity and in truth. Uh, I say shalom to the large multitude, the brothers and sisters, doing the best that they can in this vessel that the Lord has given us, this temporary house that we are in right now. Uh, but the moment they heard this gospel, they are doing their best to please the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, because his sacrifice should never be in vain. All right. We know what we did. We know how we went off. But now that he's showing us mercy, eh? he could have given this message, this glorious gospel, this truth, this blueprint, this cheat sheet. He could have given it to anybody out there. But he gave it to you and I. That is how grateful we are to this message. We have treasure that nobody has possession of. We have the true riches in this world. But the average person can, can, cannot see it. But it wasn't given to them. He says the elect has well obtained it, but the rest were blinded. And that's how grateful we are to this message. To this message. The Lord made us Israelite. He could have blessed or any of the any other nation. He could have chosen the Ishmaelite. He could have blessed the, the Ammonite. He could have blessed the Moabite, Esau. But he chose us to bless us with salvation. And that's how extremely, extremely grateful. We have to be grateful. We have to be grateful for this message. And don't ever take it for granted. Salvation is at the door. This world that you are looking at right now, this world is coming to an end and it's fast approaching. You see, and our fortunes are about to be changed. We're going to, Lord willing, we are among the numbers. Yahweh Ratazah, we are among the numbers. We are going to go from the bottom to the top. And that is what is coming for the hopeful elect. You see, you have a faith and that nobody can, family, they can't, they, they can't take it from you. Because the Lord says what? Well, before the earth was created, before the foundations were laid, the Lord chose you to bless you with salvation. That's how grateful we are. That's how grateful we are. And again, I hope this message found you in perfect peace. We know before salvation comes, guess what? We have to go through uh, the hour of temptation, which involved Esau, Edom, self-proclaimed white man, giving you a microchip. And like we've been saying, starting with our leaders from the great millstone, our head apostles, you rather die than take that microchip. You see, this is the what? The fourth industrial revolution. Their reset, their new world order involves you taking a microchip. And the Lord, Yahweh, through his son, our king, the redeemer of Israel, have raised men out here to warn you. And never to take it. Again, you'd rather go to the spirit world and come down with Yahweh Shai. Eh? You're not going to lose your spot as long as you die in the name of our King, the Redeemer of Israel, Yahweh Shai. That's right. You will have the first seat on the ship, which is coming. Eh? America is falling right in front of your eyes. America is a laughing stock. America is openly what? promoting genocide in Gaza. Not that we are picking sides, but the Lord is exposing the so-called Western civilization. You see, even before I start this lesson, there was, a, I think it was a, another United Nations uh, Security Council, another resolution to, uh, to, to have a ceasefire in Gaza. You know which country voted it down? America. America, the so-called nation that are always so-called promoting peace around the world with 750 army bases all over the world. That's right. It goes to show you that what? The king, Yahweh Shai, is coming. 
Yahawasha is coming. He has laid Esau bed. He can hide. Everybody knows that the self-proclaimed white man is the devil. You see? He is Satan. The book of Baruch chapter 4. It says, this is the book of the commandments of the power. Eh? You see? And the law that endureth forever, all they that keep it shall come to life, but such as leave it shall die. We left it. And then when we left it, we became like what? The rest of the nations. Because if you go to the book of Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 6, the Lord set us up to what? To be above all these nations. But here, Baruch is reminding us that what? We went off. We didn't keep it. Let me repeat it in case somebody, for, for somebody didn't get it. The book of Baruch chapter 4 verse 1. This is the book of the commandments of the power. And the law that endureth forever. And all they that keep it shall come to life. And we know we couldn't keep it. At the end of the day, we were going to go off regardless. If you really look, if you really go deep, you read the book of uh, Romans chapter 8. The subject was what? The creature, sorry, the creature was subject to vanity. So eventually we will go off. But here, it says here, such as leave it shall die. It says, turn thee, O Jacob, and take hold of it. Walk in the presence of the light. Thereof thou shalt mayest be illuminated. Who is the light? Our king. Let's do this quickly. Let's go to the book of John. John chapter 8 verse 10. Eh? Actually, no, let's pick up verse 11. Actually, you know what? Let's do verse 12. Then spoke Yahawashai again unto them, saying, I am the light of the world. He that followeth me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have what? The light of life. That is the laws, the statutes, the commandments. Yahawashai family, he, is, he embodies all of that. And he is the light that is shining in us in this last days. Because when we left the light, guess what? We were in pure darkness. We were following all different philosophies. Because it says in the book of Proverbs, let me see if I can get it quickly. Let's go here. The book of Proverbs, I think it's Proverbs 6. It said the light is my the command. Is it Proverbs 6, 16? Proverbs 6, 23. It says here, it says here, for the commandment is a lamp. You hear that? The commandment is a lamp. Remember the book says what? It says here, Baruch, it says what? So we can be illuminated, right? In order to be illuminated, you got to have the light. But here, listen, Proverbs chapter 6 verse 20, it says for the commandment, the Lord's statutes and commandment, which the Lord says, this is your what? Your wisdom. So when you go among these nations, they're going to look at you and say, my goodness, you guys are indeed special. But we know what happened. We couldn't keep it. But now the Lord, guess what? He turned that light on. Now we know the mistake that we've made. That's right. Eh? The moment he sent his son down here eh, to make things right for us. And he is our intercessor. Yahweh Shai. Family, he brought us back. So now we are now doing things to please the Lord. Is the Lord going to save us? No. But the fact that we have faith. We believe in Yahweh Shai. We believe the message that he preached. So when, we, when you believe something, guess what? And Yahweh Shai himself said, that's right. You're going to do your best to, uh, to please him. You see, by you showing your faith, eh, guess what? You're going to keep the laws to the best of your ability. The Lord that Yahweh Shai wouldn't give you the law. He, he wouldn't come here and die for you. And then guess what? It says the laws are done away with. No, the second covenant which is fast approaching the new bodies, these laws and statutes and commandments are going to be in our hearts. And that's what's going to make us perfect. That's how, that's why the Lord, Yahweh, His Spirit is going to dwell directly in us. The laws will never be done away with. This is how we're going to teach these nations about the laws. He says here, Proverbs 6, 23, it says, For the commandment is a lamp, and the law is light. 
and reproofs of instructions are the way of life. That's what Baruch says in the book, uh, Baruch 4.1. He said, they that leave it with what? Would die. And we died as a nation. We became who are heathen. We follow all different philosophies. Some of us became witches. That's our women nowadays. Family, that's what they are into. You look at Haiti. Family, it is scary. Eh? That's Levi. You see? I'm almost like witchcraft is, is promoted. And if you are not into witchcraft, then something is wrong with you. This is how low the Lord brought us. That's why. Right. Just pure darkness. It says verse 2 again. It says here. Baruch chapter 4 verse 2. It says, Tend thee, O Jacob, and take hold of it. It says, Walk in the presence of the light thereof, that thou mayest be illuminated. Esau eh, is not illuminated. Esau don't have the light. Eh? Esau doesn't have the light. We have the light. Because again, let me go to the book of Deuteronomy quickly. Deuteronomy chapter, I think it's Deuteronomy 7. Deuteronomy 7. Let's pick it up from verse uh, verse 6. Listen to this. It says, For thou, who? He's speaking to who? He's speaking to Israel. It says, For thou art an holy people unto the Lord Yahweh, thy power. The Lord Yahweh, thy power, have chosen thee to be special people unto himself. You see? He didn't choose the so-called Chinese. He didn't choose any other. He didn't choose the so-called East, East Indian. He didn't choose the so-called Arab. He chose you, the 12th tribe of Israel. You so-called Negroes, Latinos, African Americans, Native Americans. That's right. That is why, family, no matter what we are going through in this life here, eh, we, some of us, we can make our rent. That's right. You are stressed. Eh? Brothers are catching hell left, right, and center. Eh? We know that this is just a temporary state that we are in. Our focus always have to be on Yahweh Shai. Eh? Always, no matter what we are going through, think about the large multitude. Think about what Ezra saw. When Ezra saw Yahweh Shai putting what? Crown on the men, the 144,000. Eh? He says he couldn't see. The large multitude, that's the family reunion. No matter what we are going through, family, this is our goal. This is what we are focusing on. Meeting our King Yahweh Shai. Again, no matter what we are going through, the hell that we are catching, family, let's try to focus on Yahweh Shai. The family reunion that is coming. I, I said that to a, my brother today. You know? I said that to my brother today. I said, no matter what, whether it's your family, your, your, your domestic issues, it doesn't matter. Focus on the king. Yahweh Shai. It makes things easier to endure. Because as the Apostle Paul told us, no matter says what, the current suffering of this world doesn't compare to the glory that the Lord is going to reveal in us. So no matter whether it's your co-worker at work, whether it's your wife, your husband, no matter what is happening around you, focus on your house shy. Focus. Just close your eyes, focus. Picture yourself, family. I have a wild imagination. That's right. The whole family eh, under one umbrella. That family reunion with Yahweh Shai, our king. And that should always be our focus. He said, For thou art an holy people unto the Lord Yahweh, thy power. The Lord Yahweh, thy power, have chosen thee to be a special people unto himself. Above all people. You hear that? Above all people. You. That's right. Now they look at that, they're looking at us and saying, no, these people can never be, can never be the people of the Lord. And they can't be Israel. No, but we know the Lord brought us this law. But now we know it though. You see, that's why Baruch 4 comes to play. We know why the Lord brought us so low. Because what? We left the commandment. We left it. Eh? The light, eh? The light that was supposed to illuminate us. That's right, which is the word. We left it behind. We want to be like other nations. But here, it says here, 
It says here, above all people that are upon the face of the earth. Verse 7, it says here, the Lord Yahweh, our heavenly father, the power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, did not set his love upon you, nor choose you because ye were more in number than any people, for ye were the fewest of all people. But here, verse 8, it says, but listen to why the Lord chose you. But because the Lord Yahweh loved you. Remember, he says, I loved Jacob and I hated Esau. Self-proclaimed white men. That's right. The Lord loved us. Yes. We look at our situation right now. We're asking ourselves, how could the Lord love us if we are so poor? We are uh, uh, the last to be hired, the first to be fired. Eh? Our neighborhoods are filled with pimps, drugs, whores, and all type. Of no. This is also part of the, what, the, the movie. It's called Curses. Because, yes, he wants us to be above all nations if we keep the laws. But guess what? It came with condition. If we don't keep the law, this is what I'm going to do to you. It's like everything else. That's right. It came with conditions. You do what I'm asking you to do, you're going to rip all the benefit. But if you don't do what I'm asking you to do, that's why you're going to get all the curses. And that's right. The curses, the Lord pour it upon us. But we're going to get back to Baruch. Because here, yeah, he brought these curses upon us, but he's also about to show us mercy. And that should be the focus. So no matter what Esau is about to do with his microchip, no, you are going, you're going to be what? Loyal family, you're going to have integrity. Because you know, when we walk away from our, our Lord, we catch hell. But now that he opened your eyes and telling you that I am the one that brought you so low. I am the one that is allowing Esau to destroy your community. I am the one that allowed Esau to turn our women into whores. Eh? I am the one that allowed Esau to, put, to ask grown men to put dresses on. I am the one that destroyed you. This is what the Lord is saying to us in these last days. So he's telling you to be uh, literally be patient, suffer patiently. I brought these curses upon you and I'm the same one that's about to take it from you. It says here, verse 8, it says, But because the Lord Yahweh loved you and because he will keep the oath which he had sworn unto your fathers. We know our fathers started with Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. It says here, Have the Lord Yahweh brought you out with a mighty hand? And redeem you out of the house of bondmen from the hand of what Pharaoh, king of Egypt. It says, verse 9 it says, Know therefore that the Lord Yahweh thy power, he is power, the faithful power which keepeth covenant and mercy with them that love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. He's not a man that should lie. You see. And these are the words that comfort us. So we sit back, we say to ourselves, man, he brought us very, very low. And he has opened what? The, 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 well, uh, he has opened what? The door of mercy. I want you to walk through this door, which is what our King Yahweh shall. Believe in my son. Believe. He says, this is my son. Hear ye him. You see, for the elect, it's a very simple instruction and we are doing the best Hey, it's, it's, it's family. The laws, the laws are not grievous. That's the elect. The elect will appreciate this message. The fact that there's another way to make things right, which Yahweh already did that. Because even in this, even if we go off, His blood will cover us. But we can't say, oh, because His blood is cover, is gonna cover me. So I'm gonna go into my neighbor's wife, eh? I'm going to continue to steal. I'm going to continue to do all type of wickedness. Mm -mm. You're going to be left behind. You're going to be literally left behind. Because that grace period, eh, when you went to the, your landlord and said, listen, man, I'm two weeks short. I am so sorry. I need, can you give me a grace period? I'm going to make it right. I pick, I pick up a couple of overtime. As soon as I get that money, I'm going to come and make things right with you. That's what you just, told to, you just said to your landlord. who was about to put your, st your stuff on the curb. But you went to your landlord and said, give me a grace period. That's what Yahweh Shai did for us. You see? And now the two weeks comes and now the overtime that you made, you want to get, you want, you want to invest that overtime in Air Jordan. Guess what? That's right. Your items, your clothes, everything's going to be on the curb. Because this man gave you a two-week period. 
That's why he showed you mercy. That's what the Lord is doing for us in this last date. He's showing us mercy. You see, he's showing us mercy. So we got to make things right. Family, we don't want to miss the kingdom. The kingdom is coming. It is right here. We can see, we can feel, we can taste it. By watching what is happening around what? The world, the geopolitics. America is finished. There's so much division. Family, chaos is coming every angle. And this is the sign that the Lord told us. Look out for these signs. And when you start seeing these signs, you know that I'm very close. We have everything. It's one thing not to know what is happening. Family, we are watching. Everything the Lord said is going to be happening in this last days is happening. That is how blessed we are. Let's get back to the book of Baruch, chapter 4, verse 3. It says, Give not thine honor to another, nor the things that are profitable unto thee, to a strange nation. Why are we selling ourselves so low? Why are we selling ourselves so we can make it in Hollywood? You know? We have to put our titties out there. A woman rapping about how wet her private part is and they make her what? The woman of the year. That's right. This is how low we've become. The Lord says here, he said, give not thine honor to another. This laws here, statutes and commandments and family, it was supposed to put us above all these nations. Now, family, but now look at us today. The women are above us. They don't listen to us anymore. That's how low we've dropped. They have their own mind. They want to do their own thing. But we, we, but we, are, we are waiting though. We are waiting on the Lord. That's why the Lord says, well, suffer patiently. I'm the one that brought these curses upon you. And we are suffering. That's why we are suffering. But guess what? We know that it's only temporary. That's the thing. We know the end. You see, it's one thing not to know how, when this is going to end. Oh, it's going to end. It's going to end. Glory is coming. But we got to suffer patiently. We got to suffer patiently. It says, four, four, uh, verse 4, Baruch chapter 4, verse 4. It says, Oh, Israel, happy are we, for things that are pleasing to the Most High are made known unto us. And that's why, through the law, statutes, and commandments, we know what makes the Lord happy. The rest of the nation don't know. The Lord gave us what? Dietary laws. And civil laws. How to deal with our brothers and sisters. These are the things pleasing to the Lord. If we keep them. If we follow them. But we, had to, but we fell short. And he had to send his only begotten son down to make things right. You see? That's how, how, that's how special we are. We can't, we can't be compared to any other nation. The rest of the nation, the Lord considered them beasts. Because why? The laws and statutes and commandments, they don't have it. That's why they can eat or they can eat rats. They can eat dogs. They can eat pork. And they don't get sick. Some of them live to like 100 and 100 plus. Eh? But you try eating pork and eating shrimp and stuff, you got diabetes. You got high blood pressure. Because why? It wasn't meant for you. Because those animals, they have their purpose. But Esau always wanted to destroy you. So now he gives you all you can eat, crab legs. And then you think, oh yeah, I've arrived. Look at me, crab legs. It's only $9.99. I can eat all. I, I, that's right. Because why? Esau knows. You know, you're not supposed to eat that. But our people are not going to listen. They're going to say, oh no, the laws are done away with. Let's fill our boots. And you don't know that. That's right. That bottom feeder is making you sick. This is how special we were supposed to be. But it is coming though. We see we learn the hard, we have to learn the wickedness to appreciate righteousness. And the Lord is going to turn everything around for us. It says verse 5, it says here, Baruch 4, 5. It says, be of, a good, it says, be of good cheer, my people, the memorial of Israel. It says, ye were sold to the nations. Not for your destruction. You hear that? This is the Lord is saying this. It's not that Esau was so strong. This nation was so strong. They came and grabbed us. Wherever we were, majority of us came from the west coast of Africa. Put on slave ships. Spread out. It wasn't like they were strong. No, the Lord made sure that we had no might. He what? He gave the power to Esau. He himself proclaimed white men. Especially Amalek. And the small has big nose, the one fighting over the land right now. That's why right. they were the slave owners. 
the ship owners. That's right. Don't let them fool you. Hey? He said, ye were sold to the nations, not for your destruction, but because ye moved the most high to wrath. Ye were delivered unto your enemies. And where can you get that? Hey? You see? It says, what? Well, is it Isaiah 42? Let me see if I can get it. Isaiah 42. Who gave the prey to uh, Isaiah 42? Let me go here. Isaiah 42. Uh, what was it? I think I wrote it down. Isaiah 42, I think 24 and 25. It says here. It says, who gave Jacob? It says, who gave Jacob? Who gave Jacob for a spoil? And Israel to the robbers. Who did it? Did not the Lord Yahweh, he against whom we have sinned, for they would not walk in his ways, neither were they obedient unto his law. That's right. It wasn't like Esau was so strong and he grabbed us and packed us on slave ships. No, the Lord allowed him to do it. That's, what they, that's right. You go to the book of Deuteronomy 28. Let's go there quickly. Deuteronomy 28. Let's pick it up from verse... Uh, uh, let me see here. Is it verse 64? Yeah, let's... Uh, Deuteronomy 28, verse 63. And it shall come to pass that as the Lord Yahweh rejoiced over you to do you good and to multiply you, so the Lord Yahweh will rejoice over you to destroy you and to bring you to naught, and ye shall be plucked from of the land, whether thou goest to possess it. But listen to this, verse 64. And the Lord Yahweh shall scatter thee among all people. Who gave, the, who gave Jacob and Israel for the prey? The Lord did. It's another confirmation. He says, and the Lord, uh, Deuteronomy 28, verse 64. And the Lord Yahweh shall scatter thee among all people. Wherever you go on this planet here, you're going to find Israelites among them. And them, usually you, when you find them, they are what? at the bottom of society. They don't have the, they are not the CEO of a company. No, they are the mailmen. That's right. These are the curses. These are going to be signed on us, showing you who the Israelites are. Verse 64, it says here, Deuteronomy 28, 64. It says, and the Lord Yahweh shall scatter thee among all people. From the one end of the earth, even unto the other, and there thou shalt serve other gods, Allah, Buddha, Santa Maria, sweet baby Jesus, mm -hmm. which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, even wood and stone. Do you think Abraham was calling on, calling the name of Allah, and then bowing down and worshiping the crescent, or or what, calling in the sweet baby Jesus? All these idols that now we we call we call upon. No, family, the Lord hated that. That's what they, the Lord hated that. Don't make sure you don't mention any gods in your mouth. But guess what? We didn't take heed. We didn't take heed. It says, which neither thy nor thy fathers have known, even wood and stone. That's why right. people walking around there with the friggin' cross with the sweet baby Jesus on it. Yeah, this is my God. This is my God. He can do no wrong. My God is all love. Man, you don't know the power that we serve, man. And you guys are about to find out the, uh, the, the anger of the Lord. Because over time, over time, when people become so comfortable, eh? People become so comfortable, they forget, they forget, you know, they, it's, it's, it was the complacent, that's right. You see? They forgot what the Lord did to Pharaoh. All the signs, all the destruction of the Lord from the flood all the way to getting us out of Egypt. Eh? All, the, all the destruction he brought upon this nation when our King David went and fought them. The Lord said, kill both women, children. I'm like, man, this is written in the Bible. Go and read it. All the, all the, all the, all the wars that uh, all our forefathers fought in. The Lord gives instructions. He said, go. I don't... Kill everybody. Kill animal children. Oh, uh, and then sometimes you say, "Okay, yeah, you know what? I'll kill all the men, but take the women, hmm? all the babies." That's this is the Lord. This is the power that we serve. But everybody says, "Oh, the Most High can never do." He says, "I form." He says, "I create 
darkness. No, no. It says, I formed the light and create darkness. I made peace and create evil. I, the Lord, do all these. But how come people don't know that? Because family, they are following false prophets in the churches. The churches is all about making you feel good. Hmm? It's all about making you feel good. They're not going to go into prophecy. No, they're not going to tell you who you are. They're going to tell you that everybody can come in. Everybody can be saved. And yes, your neighbor, love your neighbor as that. No, your neighbor is your fellow Israelite. That's right. But we are extremely grateful that the Lord opened our eyes. He brought us to the real gospel. And through our, through our elders from the great millstone, the bishop, uh, the, the, obviously the, first, the, the head apostles all the way down, we are extremely grateful. Let's continue. It says here, verse 6 again, it says, Ye were sold to the nations, not for your destruction, but because ye moved the power to wrath. Ye were delivered unto what? The enemies. We read that in the book of Deuteronomy 28. It says, For ye provoke him that made you by what? Sacrificing unto devils. Calling on what? In the, calling in the name of all these gods. That's why. Right. Celebrating Christmas. Hey, Easter. Valentine. Halloween. Because these are what? Sacrificing unto devils. And our people are still doing it. He says, let me repeat that again. He says, for ye provoke him that made you. Who, prov who, who, who made us? Yahweh. We provoke him by doing what? Sacrificing unto devil. People are still out there celebrating Christmas. Celebrating what? Easter. But they don't want to do the research and find out where did this originated from. Valentine. All these nations and their customs. That's why we became Gentiles. Eh? That's why the Lord finally said, I have enough. Enough is enough. Forget these people, man. They are gone. But there's a remnant, an elect. And we thank the Lord, Yahweh Ba'ashem, Yahweh Shai for that. The Lord don't need a huge number, no. He's going to bring the nation back. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at Adam. I say Adam. Look at Noah. Four, four, Noah's sons. That's why they were able to populate the whole world again. The Lord, the Lord is not about big numbers. No, he wants to show his power. He knows that he can, there's no, he can turn stones to teach this word here. The Lord can literally have stones out of the trees teaching this word here. That's why we should never be proud. You know, that's the power that we serve. Look at, look, look, look at the, look, look at the number, look at the Israelite men standing up in great boldness, teaching these lessons in the land of their captivity, telling Esau, the self-proclaimed white man, that he's a devil. That is power right there. That is power. He said, for ye provoke him that made you by sacrificing unto devils and not the most high. Ye have forgotten the everlasting power that brought you up and ye have grieved Jerusalem that nursed you. I swear, look at the blind right now. Who's fighting over it? Remember, Jerusalem were people before a place. Second, uh, what is it? Second Maccabee, I believe, chapter 5, verse 19. I swear, Jerusalem. Look at, look at the land right now. It's desolate. But you have these two clowns fighting over the land. But the same devil, the same demons are going to turn around and go build it back better. Because Jerusalem, that's Yahawashah's headquarters. It's going to be paved with gold. When it's done, oh yeah, you're not going to recognize it. But all the people fighting over it right now, they are doing exactly what they're supposed to be doing. Because the Bible says what? The land has to be trodden down by the Gentiles. They are fulfilling prophecy. Don't family sit back and enjoy the show. Don't get up. They, the same demons that are fighting over the land right now, they will go back. They're going to labor. They're going to build back Jerusalem. Hard core slavery. That is what is coming. Verse 9. It says, For when she saw the wrath of the power coming upon you, she said, Hearken, O ye, that dwell about Zion. The Most High have brought upon me great mourning. Yeah, because the Lord says what? The prophets out there warning you, if you don't do this, I'm going to destroy you. I'm going to destroy you. He just don't, he doesn't send one prophet. He said, one after the day, Jeremiah, Ezekiel, you name them. He will send them out. He said, day in and day out. Waking them up, sending them to what? That's right. The children of Israel. But we don't take heed. We didn't take heed. And that's, the, that's why we are in the state that we are in right now. But he's showing mercy in these last days. 
And that's how beautiful the story is. He's showing mercy to what? The his elect. We are extremely grateful. That's why when we know we are unable to do less in family, we don't sit. We, we, we can't sleep. Because we got to show our appreciation. The fact that we are about to inherit a kingdom, kingdom of heaven. We're going to have, we're going to have angelic bodies on planet here, ruling on this planet. The kingdom is going to be set up on this planet here in a different vessel, a different body, a spiritual body. He said flesh and blood is not going to inherit the kingdom of heaven. We don't know how the body is going to function. But he says, Yahweh Shai says, when he shows up, we're going to be like him. In the first, I think it's this first John chapter three, verse two, I think. Yeah, he's going, he, we're going to be like the king of kings, the Lord of lords. And that's why we are, we are grateful. So that, that's why I said, no matter what comes your way, no matter what you're going through, focus about your The focus should be on your king, Yahweh Shai. Close your eyes, picture him, and the angel crack, crack the sky open. You see that that ship, which is going to cover the entire earth. Oh, it's going to be big. Yahweh Shai ship is going to be every wherever everybody is, they're going to see it. Whether they are in China, whether they are in Canada, whether they are in uh, uh, Sri, Sri, uh, Sri Lanka, whether they are in uh, Ghana or whatever, uh, the island, they're going to see the ship. It says, all eyes shall see him. You know how big that is going, that, that going to be? It says, all eyes. He didn't say some eyes, all eyes. So it doesn't matter where you are on this planet here, whether it's through satellite or whatever, you're going to see that ship. But I think majority of the people are going to see you live. They're not going to see you through television. No. Yahawashai is coming. It says, verse 9, it says here, For when she saw the wrath of the power coming upon you, this is Jerusalem, she said, How can, oh yea, that dwell about Zion? The Most High have brought upon me great mourning. It says, For I saw the captivity of my sons and daughters, which the everlasting brought upon them. You hear that? You think Esau was the one that put us in slavery? No, 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 no. The Lord did it. Esau is just the sword, the sword of the Lord. He does the bidding of the Lord on the left hand side. Esau is the Satan. You know? He goes all out for the Lord. Hmm? But the Lord is now about to turn around and punish him and destroy that nation. The so called Edomite. The, so, that's not so called. Their biblical name is Edom. It's from Esau's name was changed to Edom. The uh, Adumia is the Greek pronunciation of Esau, uh, Edom. Okay, they are still the same people. Today, they might identify themselves as what? Caucasians, Europeans, British, American, uh, Canadian, or uh, uh, um, uh, Swedish, or whatever. They are the same devil. Mm -hmm. That's right. They are the same people. Whom the Lord says is going to have indignation forever. Malachi 1 for border of wickedness. That's right. The same ones that are poisoning everything that they touch, the ones that are taking food and then they take it to the factory, remove the nutrients in, they package it eh, and put it in your grocery store. That's right. They are the adversary of the Lord. It says here, verse 11, it says, With joy did I nourish them, but send them away with weeping and mourning. It says, Let no man rejoice over me, a widow, and forsaken of many. Who for the sins of my children am left desolate because they departed from the law of the Most High. That's why right. Jerusalem is grieving. Mm -hmm. Jerusalem is grieving. Look at us today. We've been spread everywhere. We don't have a place to call our home. No, Jamaica or Barbados is not your home. America is not your home. Jerusalem, that is our home. That's our homeland. And we're going back there. Eh? We're going back there because you become, you become so comfortable here and you think this is your home. No. The elect, we are looking forward to going home and working with our king, Yahweh to restore the earth because the earth was created for our sake. That's right. The rest of the nations, they are just extra in this movie. And their whole duty is to serve the children of Israel. That's right. We are not equal. You hear that? We are not equal. There's no equal right. The children of Israel are at the top. It says Baruch 4 verse 13. It says they, they knew not his statutes, nor walk in the ways of what? His commandment. Nor trot in the path of discipline in his righteousness. It says here, let them that dwell about Zion come and remember, yea, the captivity of my sons and daughters, 
which the everlasting have brought upon them. He said, For he have brought a nation upon them from far, a shameless nation, and of a strange language, who neither reverence old men nor pitied, children, or pitied child. That's what it says in the book of Zechariah 1.15. It says, I was a little displeased with, uh, with uh, let me see if I can get it. And they forward the affliction. Oh, Esau showed us no mercy. He showed us no mercy. Let's go to the book of Zechariah if I can get it. Zechariah 1 5, 1 15, I think. Zechariah 1 15. It says here, It says, And I am very sore displeased with the heathen. That are at ease, for I was but a little displeased with who? Israel, and they helped forward the affliction. Oh, yeah. They will work an old man to death on the plantation. They didn't care. You are five, six years old out there plucking what? Uh, picking cotton. That's right, with the family. That's right. They separated you. If you misbehave, they sell your children to the next family. That was it for you. Esau, self proclaimed white man, showed us no mercy. He showed us no mercy. And you think we're going to show you mercy in the kingdom? <laughs> it says, For he have brought a nation upon them from far, a shameless nation and of a strange language, who neither reverence old men nor pitied child. Oh, Esau is never going to show you no mercy. He doesn't care whether you are a child or no. No. He, that's not a sin. It's not in him. He's not a compassionate person. No. Because if you're a compassionate person, look at what they are doing in Gaza. Eh? Dropping bombs on pregnant women and eh? elderly folks indiscriminately. Family, they just killing this. Because guess this man here, when it comes to blood, oh, you have no. He loves blood. Hmm? He loves blood. Everything about this man involves blood. He goes to the steak house. He says, okay, yeah, let's make sure that I have blood in my steak, okay? No, I don't want no friggin' uh, well-done steak. Make sure there's enough blood in there for me. That's Esau Edom. And that's how the Lord created him. Red. And that's what Edom means. Eh? It's not white. It's not white. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. It said, but what can I help you? <coughs> no, sorry. Verse 16. Baruch 4, 16. He said, these have carried away the, the, the dear beloved children of the widow and left her that was alone, desolate, without daughters. That's Jerusalem right now. Look at Jerusalem. We are not there, but rather we've been spread all over these nations. Eh? And Yahweh is going to make everything right. And that's what we are waiting for. And that's what we are waiting for. Family, whatever we are going through right now is temporal. Whatever you can see right now is only temporal. You know, Yahweh Shai is going to restore everything back to us. Our King, the Redeemer, he is going to restore everything back to us. You got to have the faith to believe it. When you were busy in the churches, you have no clue where, whether you're going or whether you're coming. But here you are. Eh? To this glorious gospel, everything is clear as day to you. Because the Lord wanted you to get this message. This message is not for everybody. The only one the Lord wants, they are going to receive this message. You remember the apostles asked Yahweh Shai, why speak to them in parables? And he says to them, because it was for you to get it. Them, it wasn't given to them. That's why I'm trying to confuse them. Eh? And that's why I speak to them in parable. Eh? This message is not for everybody. But you, it's like clear as day. Everything makes sense to you. Because why? It was given to you. You were picked before the foundation of the earth. So when someone can't get it, family, you moving on. Don't try to argue with anybody and bring them in. Oh, you are an Israelite? That's how we were when we received this message. We wanted to share it with all our family members. And guess what? They spit, they, the family, they spit in our face. They spit in our face. Oh, no, no I'm black. I'm this, that. I say, they, that's okay. It's not for everybody. <coughs> Remember, whatever family you have right now, family, that's why. Right. Is it the family that you had in the kingdom family? We don't know. You see, whatever you have right now is temporal. Again, keep that in mind. Whatever you have on this end is temporal. So if you lose it, it is okay. You see, we seek what is coming. What, what, whatever the Lord gives you, that is going to be permanent. That's going to belong to you. You're going to own it. It's going to be for you. Just you. Your family is going to be you. 
It's going to be for you. It's not going to be for anybody else. You see? He said, but what can I help you? Verse 17, Baruch 4, 17. He said, but what can I help you? For he that brought these plagues upon you will deliver you from the hands of your enemies. You see the balance of the Lord? Eh? When we said our Father is full of tender mercy, we, we, we're not joking. At one point, when we were at the bottom and we didn't know what was happening to us, we were lost, the dry bone. We were in a confused state. That was scary because all our thing was to go to school, get the education, buy a house, do whatever, have family, and then you're going to die. If you retire, you make some money, and then you're going to die. But this year, it gave us life. That's the light. The illuminated. We are the true Illuminati. Hmm? You see, now, he brought this plague upon us. He taught us a valuable lesson. You see, he's the man of his word. Because he also promised, yes, I will indeed. Eventually, I will deliver you. I want to teach you a lesson. And he taught us a good lesson. And this lesson here is going to follow us to the kingdom. And the nations, we have to teach them righteousness. Because we experience the wickedness. And we know that when you follow wickedness, nothing, not, nothing good comes out of wickedness. Look at all these people that have sold their soul to Hollywood. And now everybody's coming out complaining that, oh, I wish I, if I had to do it again, I wouldn't have done it. I sold my soul. I killed my mother so I can make $20 million. Now this and that. No, that's wickedness. We've learned it. Eh? The rap music that we used to love, we can't listen to it anymore because Esau have hijacked it. Eh? If, you are, if, if you are singing about how to kill your brother, how to commit adultery, family, you will be promoted. That's right. You will sell, you, you will win the Grammy Award. You will win, you get the platinum, plat, platinum albums. That's why right. we've learned it. And now we are trying to walk away from all of that. Because it didn't benefit us. It destroyed us. It took the men out of the house. Eh? The woman was out there jumping from one cock to the other. That's right. Sleeping with all these different baby fathers. That's right. And then going after these men. That's why we were destroyed as a nation. We are destroyed because the Lord brought it upon us for walking away from his laws and the statutes and commandments. And now look at us. He's bringing us back again. That's the balance. He says a false balance is abomination to the Lord. And he is a father, like I said, a father who is full of compassion. You see, his mercies endure forever, especially when it comes to Israel. It's almost like we can do no wrong. You know, even after, even you go back and read our history. You see, if, the Lord will send, even the Lord will send uh, the, uh, the, the prophets to go and tell you, listen, turn your way, turn from here. I want you to family, come on, practice justice and eh? look after the poor, do this and that, that, and family, we will disobey the Lord. And then what? Even when we get in trouble, we call upon him. He always delivers us. That's the father that we serve. And that's what he's doing in these last days. It says here, verse 18. It says, for he that brought these plagues upon you will deliver you from the hands of your enemies. You hear that? He says that in the book of what? Uh, Isaiah 40, uh, Isaiah 40, 40 uh, Isaiah 42, uh, 24 to 25. He gave us to what? The prey. He gave us to Esau, Edom, and these nations, right? But here he's saying, he's saying that, yes, let me repeat that again in case somebody missed it. He said, for he that brought these plagues, eh, slavery, eh, that's right, turn your women into whores. The men don't know whether they want to be women or men. That's right. Men are more feminine than, 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 than women. This is the Lord. These are the plagues. Eh? Our women right now, our men, family, overweight, diabetes, blood pressure, we are through, but there's a remnant. But here, for he that brought all these plagues, or brought these plagues upon you, will deliver you from the hands of your enemies. It says, go your way, O oh my children. Go your way, for I am left desolate. Eh? It says, I have put off the clothing, the clothing of peace. That's Jerusalem. It's morning right now. We have Gentiles, family enjoying the land, but it's not going to be long. 
Family, we are living in the last the, the, the last days. This is it. The kingdom is coming. Eh? That's why the Lord raises men up in these last days to bring you back home. And this is all the work of the Lord. But here, verse 20, he said, I have put off the clothing of peace. At one point, that's why we had peace in Jerusalem for what, 40 years under King David and then King Solomon. Eh? You see, I think it's yeah, King Solomon, we had 40 years, right? 40, King Solomon, sorry. King Solomon, 40 years. You see, now we're going to experience everlasting peace, says in the book of uh, Isaiah, Isaiah 9, 6 and 7. Shiloh is coming. It says here, I have put off the clothing of peace and put upon me the sackcloth of my prayer. I will cry unto the everlasting in my days. Verse 21, listen to this. We're almost done, family. I know I wanted this thing to be short, but you know how you know how the spirit flows. It says here, Baruch 4, 21. It says, be of good cheer, O my children. Cry unto the Lord Yahweh, and he will deliver you from the power and the hand of the enemies. Who is he sending? He's sending Yahweh Shai. You see? Be of good I'm sending my son. The deliverance is coming. He's coming with ships, family ships, chariots. You see? So no matter what we are going through, it doesn't matter family issue, work issue, rent issue, and play, you sick constantly. Focus on your shy. Focus on the ships coming through. Eh? Focus. Think about how that reunion, meeting your shy for the first time. Think about the party. How it's going to be. That solemn assembly. Man, King David is going to be there. It's going to be. <laughs> It's going to be something, boy. It says here, for my hope, verse 22. It says, for my hope is in the what? Everlasting. That he will save you. And joy is come unto me from the Holy One because of the mercy which shall soon. Listen to this in case somebody missed this. Take, I'm going to slow this down so somebody can get it. Verse 22. <clears throat> for my hope is in the everlasting. Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh that he, Yahweh Bahashem Yahweh Shai, will save you eh, through his only begotten son, Yahweh Shai. It says, and joy is come unto me from the Holy One because of what? The mercy, listen to this, the mercy which shall soon come unto you from the everlasting our Savior. The moment you receive this message, that's mercy right there. That's the spiritual power. You have the understanding of the word. You seeing everything the Lord is saying that is going to take place before he comes. You are actually seeing it live. You see, you are witnessing. You see America. The one, one, at one point, the most powerful nation in the world is falling right in front of you. Falling. The West is falling. And it's going to be Russia and finally it's going to put America down. Finally, you are witnessing it. That's the mercy. He said, verse 23, he said, for I sent you out with mourning. That's right. 70 AD, that was the last siege. Eh? Women were hanged, raped, kids were thrown off. Just, just pure killing, destruction. And then some of us went and, and ended up into what? The interiors of Africa. That's right. And then from there, slave ships. He said, for I sent you out with mourning and weeping, but the Most High will give you to me again with joy and gladness forever. That's it. That's what is coming. We left mourning, but we're going to return back to Jerusalem. Yahweh is taking us home. He said, like as now the neighbors of Zion, all these nations that are surrounded, eh, that surround Jerusalem, eh? That's why right. it said, like us now, the neighbors of Zion have seen your captivity. Oh, yeah, they enjoyed us because we build their nations. They love seeing us at the bottom. Eh? Everything black, 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 black. That's why right. black people, there's black people, that black people, there's yeah, their family. We are not black. We are not black. These are all social constructs. These are all part of the curses. Eh? Because one of your heritage is what? Your name, who you are, your culture, everything. Esau took that from you. Psalm 83, he took that from you. 
He took that from you. And he gave you the name white. He gave you the name Hispanic, Native American, Native Indian. Eh? All these so-called bywords. And you adopted it and then you ran with it. And you actually make a son. I am black and I'm proud. Void of light and proud of being void of light. That's right. That's what black means. Savage. No, we have the light. The law, statutes and commandments were given to us. The rest of the nation, they don't have it. They are the one. That's right. They are the one void of light. That's a whole different topic for another day. It says here, Baruch 4, 24. It says, like as now the neighbors of Zion have seen your captivity, so shall they see shortly your salvation from our power, which shall come upon you with great glory and brightness of the everlasting. When Yahweh shall crack those skies open. Family, we're going to lose our mind, man. The joy, the joy, the joy. We are looking. We, the hopefully that we are looking, we are looking, waiting. The, the wise virgin, we are, we trim our lamp, we are waiting for the king. But the average person have no clue. They have no clue. Excuse me. Verse 25 says, my children, listen to this. <clears throat> children are what? The elect. My children, suffer patiently. You hear what the Lord is saying? Suffer patiently. Patient means what? Suffering. And? Eh? That's why it says, people will say, oh, why, why do I have to suffer? No. Because why? Like, remember, Apostle Paul said, the current suffering of this world doesn't compare to the glory which is going to be revealed in us. Roughly power phrasing. So, yes, we're going to suffer. If it comes, yeah, take it cheerfully. Take it cheerfully. It's okay. It's okay. Eh? You've been reduced so low that everybody thinks that they can talk to you whichever way they want. It is okay. It is okay. Suffer patiently he said my children suffer patiently the wrath that is come upon you from the most high hey eh? remember whatever you're going through the fact that everybody's talking down on you the fact that nobody want to hang around with you the fact that everybody you are like you've been isolated that's why the lord brought it upon you because the lord is what is going to purge you hey eh? yeah how shall i suffer we are not he said what the servant is not greater than the master yeah how shall i suffer what make you, you want to have the same glory that you you want the lord to glorify that's right you have to suffer you can't just uh, receive a gift without doing anything for it go to work and then don't work for five five six five five days or six and ask the boss to give you money no it's not gonna work you have to suffer you gotta work for that you gotta work for that crown he said my children suffer patiently the wrath that has come upon you from the power for thine enemy have persecuted thee, but shortly thou shalt see his destruction and shall tread upon his neck. You hear that? Your enemies, they enjoy having nest in captivity. They enjoy calling you black. They enjoy telling, oh yeah, that's my gardener. Oh yeah, that's my cook. Oh yeah, he, he's the one. Yeah, he's the one that takes the toilet. He comes and clean the toilet. And yeah, that's right. The Lord says, suffer patiently. You see, suffer patiently. You see, when I say when you're going through this, let's focus on Yahweh Shai. Let's focus on our king. It says there, verse 20 says, My delicate ones have gone rough ways. Listen to this. My delicate ones have gone rough ways because why? We follow all these nations. Eh? We turn away from the law, statutes, and commandments. But here, this it says here, and we're taken away as a flock caught of the enemies. Eh? It says here, verse, verse 27, Be of good comfort. Oh, my children, and cry unto our power, for ye shall be remembered of him that brought these things upon you. He already gave you. He woke you up. Baruch chapter 2 verse 30. He woke you up. You have a name now to call upon. Yahweh, Yahweh, Shai. Eh? You see? He's remembering us now. Now we get on our knees. We put our head down. We're praying. The Lord is hearing our prayers. We're sighing and crying. You, hear the, you have the angels guiding you. Oh yeah, family, the angels are here. They are around us. Trust me when I say that. The angels are here protecting the elect. You see? It says, verse 28, it says, For as it was your mind to go astray from the power, by not following his statutes and commandments, by following Hindu, by following Buddha, following Esau and his wickedness, that's right. But here, so being returned, seek him ten times more. Now, that's all we do. This, all, this is our focus. Constantly praying, constantly asking, reading, watching the brother's lesson, reading, eh, edifying the sheep. 
That's why you're seeking the Lord constantly. This is it. Family, this is the most important thing in the world. There's nothing out there that should trump this work here. There's nothing. Not your wife, not your husband, not your kids. This is the number one thing going. Everything we have here is temporal. Majority of it is fake anyways. We're looking forward to what is the Lord is Yahweh Shai is bringing. For us it was your mind to go astray from the Most High. So being returned back to him, seek him ten times more. It's not for he that have brought these plagues upon you shall bring you everlasting joy with your salvation. The same Lord that gave us into the hands of Esau said, allow Esau to mistreat us, hang us, you know what, lynch us, cut our private, cut our balls, cut the womb of our mothers, our sisters, eh, our wives, so that they can use the baby to what? To feed alligators, to catch alligators. That's right. The same one that did that. That's what the Lord did. And he's showing us mercy in these last days. It says, for he that have brought these plagues upon you, our power, Yahweh, eh, shall bring you everlasting joy with your salvation. That's the son, our king, Yahweh Shai. We're going to see Yahweh Shai face to face. <laughs> Man, it's going to be an emotional day, boy. It's going to be something. Verse 31, it says, Miserable are they eh, that afflicted thee and rejoice at thy fall. That's all these nations. They all enjoy seeing us being the laughing stock of every, every society. Nobody respects the so-called black people. Eh? No. This, our, they say what? Research showed that our women, the so-called black women, is what? The least dated woman in the world. Yeah, you, sometimes you, you, you understand it. Yeah, because every opportunity that, uh, what is it called? Keisha or whatever, their names are like Laquanda La or Laquisha. Eh? They want to Turk. They want to show their ass. Eh? That's right. That's how low the Lord brought us. But the same, the least dated woman is going to be the head now. We're going to go from the bottom to the top. All because of a sacrifice that Yahweh Shai made for us. That's why we can't wait to worship the king. That's why we worship the king. He's everything to us. Yahweh Shai. It says here, verse 31, it says, Miserable are they that afflicted thee and rejoice at thy fall. That's right. They enjoyed it, man. They enjoyed it. Because the so-called black woman, the so-called black man, nobody like. We are freaking, you go to the, the prison system, is filled with what? Uh, with us. The northern tribe, the southern tribe, that's right. Israel. That's right. You want to look for them, go to the prison. That majority of us, that's right. And America turned what? Prison into what? A military, in, uh, sorry, they call it what? The prison industrial complex. It's a big business. You can literally invest in the prison, family. That's right. Esau, man. <laughs> man, I tell you. It said, for as she rejoiced at thy ruin and was glad of thy fall, so shall she be grieved for her own desolation. That's right. That brings to a lamentation 421. Oh yeah, Esau is going to drink the cup. He's going to guzzle it down. He's going to guzzle it down. They enjoy, all these nations, they all enjoy seeing us fall. Eh? Seeing us at the bottom. But guess what though? It's only temporary, family. We have forever to enjoy the kingdom. And they're going to be in captivity for a thousand years. Oh yeah. That's what is coming for these nations. It says here, verse, uh, verse 34. What time is it? Oh, one hour. We're going to wrap this up, family. It says, verse 34, it says, For I will take away the rejoicing of her great multitude, and her pride shall be turned into mourning. That's Esau. I believe what, uh, Isaiah 47 also talks about that, right? You see, thou shalt no longer be called a queen. That's right. He said, come and sit down in the dust, eh? You virgin daughter of Babylon, something to that effect. That's right. You know more, you're not going to be the glory of kingdom. Esau, Edom, you're not going to rule anybody anymore. You're not going to have military bases around the world. This is, you're not going to have access to the air anymore. Nobody's going to say, today, I wanna, I'm going on vacation. I'm going to buy, I'm going to fly to Jamaica. Oh, just go to see some black men. No. It's all done. 
It is all done for Esau. It, nobody's going to have access to the air. No. It's hardcore captivity. That's coming for these nations. Yeah, that's what is coming. It says here, verse 35, it says here, For, for, for fire shall come upon her from the everlasting, long to endure, and she shall be inhabited of devils for a great time. That's right. Read the book of uh, Isaiah, Isaiah 13 and I believe Isaiah 34. When America, when the fire settled, eh? and, then, and then Jeremiah, I think 50, what, 51 or 50, 50, when the fire settled, guess what? It's going to be what? That's right, a desert. Wild animals are going to be what? Living in America. America is going to be a monument just like the way Sodom and Gomorrah eh? is up to today. People talk about Sodom and Gomorrah. That's going to be America. Nobody's going to live on the land. This is what is coming. Verse 36, it says, Oh, Jerusalem, look about thee towards the east, and behold, the joy that cometh unto thee from the power. Look at Jerusalem. It's going to see us. That uh, was, uh, I think, Revelation where uh, I think John saw the new Jerusalem coming down from the heaven. That's the chariot. Everybody, we all coming down with our king, Yahweh Shai. That's what we are looking forward to, family. Yahweh Ratazah. It says, verse 36, Oh, Jerusalem, look about thee towards the east, and behold the joy that cometh unto thee from the power. Lo, thy sons come, whom thou sentest away, they come gathered together from the east to the west by the word of the Holy One. That's the gospel. That's what is gathering us right now. The word. Because family, if I do this lesson, someone, whatever you are, you have access to the internet, you can watch it. It doesn't matter where you are. You can watch it. And this is the word that is gathering everybody. They're going to go, what? We are the Israelites? They're going to do, if they are part of the elect, it's going to be, they're going to be sealed. You know? This is the word. That's, the word is doing it. You see? And that's the, I think, Psalm, Psalm 19. That's the internet scripture, I believe. Is this Psalm 19? I think so. Yeah. You see? This is what is gathering. The word is gathering. And then Yahweh Shah will finally show up and get everybody on, on, on the ship. The elect. Only the elect. Only the elect. It says, Lo, thy sons come whom thou sentest away. They come gather together from the east to the west by the word of the Holy One, rejoicing in the glory of our power. Beloved, I hope you were edified. Eh? I hope you were edified. So no matter what is coming our way, no matter what we're all going through, family, we know most of us are catching hell. But guess what? Though? It is condition of the battle. Apostle Paul said, he says what? The current suffering, let me get it. Let me finish there. Let me see if I can get it. Romans 8. Let's go there. Romans 8, 18. Romans 8, 18. It says here, For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time, eh, whatever we are going through, eh, it doesn't matter, health issues, eh, right? family issues, eh, work issues. Eh? It says here, For I reckon that the sufferings of this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Eh? And this is how we are, we are we being comforted. The word. Because one, if you don't have this now and you're going through something, eh? and then you think like this will never end. But we know that whatever we are going through is only temporary. And how do we find out about that? Whether it's temporary or permanent, it's through the word. So when you know what is coming, you know what we are going through, you find the answers in the Bible family, you are at peace. That's the spiritual power. To be able to go, everything you're going through, you find the answers in the Bible family, that's spiritual power. 
And we thank the Lord, Yahweh, by Hashem, Yahweh, for giving us the spirit to be able eh, to get a proper understanding. You see, that what for me, the favor Yahweh did for us, man, by coming down here in the flesh, going on the cross to finally go and then the family gave his life. So now he is making intercession with us. Whatever we pray, he out there negotiate, telling telling his father, okay, yeah, I think, you know, he went out for me. Yeah, you know what, I like, I like him, you know what I mean? Show him a little, give him a little break. Family, Yahweh Shai is our lawyer. That's right. And what is a lawyer? Do? A lawyer is always trying to get what? Their client off, right? That's Yahweh Shai. You see? Looking for mercy. And that's our, that's, that's our mercy seat. <laughs> yeah, I was shy, man. Anyway, beloved, I hope you all edified. I hope this message finds you in perfect peace, man. You see, the kingdom is coming. You see, the Lord gives us into the hands of these nations. And he's the same one that's a, coming to take us out. He's coming to redeem us, man. That's the name of Yahweh Shai, the Redeemer. So, beloved, I'll leave it there. Again, all praises on and glory to the power of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Yahweh. Our Heavenly Father and His only begotten Son, our King, our Redeemer, Yahweh Shai. Double honors to our head apostles. Yes, family. To our head apostles, the true leaders of Israel today that taught us this truth. And salutation, peace to all the brothers out there doing this work in sincerity. I pray that this message also find you in perfect peace. Let's continue to push. Let's continue to find me. We are the finish line, man. Let's make sure that the sheep are, the sheep are fed. Eh? Make sure that the family, we're giving them information. We're giving them this organic meal eh, to sustain them. We're not giving nobody GMOs. Okay, GMOs, you're going to find GMOs in the churches. The one, what we are bringing out, that's the true organic meal. Eh? That's why when you eat it, you know that, listen, man, you don't need any multivitamins to make up for the nutrients that you don't have. Eh? You, it's, it comes with everything that you need. This is it. This is the gospel of Yahweh Shai. Anyway, beloved, I'll leave it there. Shalom.